So let's talk about A24 spine tingling big debut of Ari Aster, Hereditary. Big D's Entertainment, Red Kings and Reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual Bear, known to us the Big D, and this time around, I bring to you a review of the 2018 psychological supernatural horror flick Hereditary, released by A24, written and directed by Ari Aster in his directorial debut, starring Tony Collette, along with Alex Wolf, Millie Shapiro, and her intro. In her introduction, Anne Dowd and Gabriel Byrne. It follows a grieving family tormented by a demonic entity after the death of their secretive grandmother. This was certainly a big uh, success, and what have you, and was once their, and was formerly their highest grossing film of all time until it was being by Everything Everywhere All at Once last year. Astor had recently worked on various short films, most notably the film The Strange Thing About the Johnsons. It attracted the attention of A24, who greenlit this. So, and it was released in June of 2018, where it was released almost a half a year before, in mid-January of that year, at the Sundance Festival. Here's our story. Miniature artist Annie Graham lives with her psychiatrist husband, Steve, their 16-year-old son, Peter, and their 13-year-old daughter, Charlie. The family attends the funeral of Annie's secretive mother, Ellen, at which Annie is surprised at the number of mourners in attendance. She attends a bereavement... I mean, bereavement... Sorry if I mispronounced the word. Bereavement support group, revealing her troubled childhood and that she and her mother had a fraught relationship until Charlie was born, when Ellen became a significant figure in raising her. Meanwhile, Steve receives a phone call telling him that an unknown perpetrator desecrated Ellen's gravesite, but does not reveal this to Annie. Pierre is invited to a party, and Annie insists that Charlie go with him. On the way to the party, the siblings pass a telephone pole card with an occult sigil. At the party, Pierre leaves Charlie unattended. She eats some chocolate cake, though unbeknownst to her, the cake has walnuts in it, and Charlie has a severe nut allergy and thus goes into aphylactic shock. As Pierre drives Charlie to the hospital, she leans out of the window for air, but when Pierre swerves to avoid a dead deer lying on the road, she is decapitated by the sigil telephone pole. In shock, Pierre drives home and leaves Charlie's headless body in the back seat of his parents' car, which Annie discovers to her horror the following morning. Following Charlie's death, Annie becomes resentful towards Pierre, a traumatized Pierre drifts through life in a daze, and Steve tries to continue life as normal. Annie befriends a support group member named Joan, and she teaches Annie to perform a sentence, I mean, a sentence, excuse me, to commune with Charlie's ghost. Later that night, Annie convinces her family to attempt the sentence. Objects begin to move and smash, and Pierre is terrified when Annie is possessed and speaks in Charlie's voice until Steve throws water on her. As Pierre begins to be haunted by supernatural forces, Annie suspects Charlie's spirit has become vengeful and demonic. When she sees images manifesting in Charlie's sketchbook threatening Pierre, she throws the book into the fireplace. However, her clothing goes up in flames at the same time as the book does. Her clothes only stop burning when she pulls the book away from the flames. Annie goes through her murder's old belongings and finds a photo album that shows Ellen to have been Queen Lee, the leader of a coven, and Joan one of her acolytes. Another book describes the demon king Paimon, who wishes to inhabit the body of a male host. The summoner of Paimon will receive wealth and rewards. In the act, Annie finds Ellen's rotting, decapitated body and occultist runes. Now for the ending. As always, you know the procedure. You have five seconds to sub this video. Go to the description box below. Fast forward to the time below. As I'm counting down, if you've seen the movie already, please continue. Okay, you've been warned. 
While Peter is outside his school, Joan appears and attempts to expel his spirit from his body for the Demon King. In class, Peter is taken over by an unseen force and slams his head against his desk, breaking his nose. Annie informs Steve of her ties to Charlie's sketchbook and begs him to burn it. As she cannot bring herself to take her own life. When he refuses, she snatches the book from him and flings it into the fire, only for Steve to burst into flames instead. As naked coven members begin gathering both inside and around the house, Peter wakes after dark and finds his father's charred corpse, then quickly notices one of the coven members in a nearby doorway. A now possessed Annie then chases him through the house. He attempts to hide in the egg. Annie follows him and then beheads herself with a piece of piano wire. Peter jumps from the egg window. A glowing orb enters and reanimates his body. Now displaying Charlie's mannerisms, he follows Annie's floating headless corpse into Charlie's treehouse, where Joan and other members of the coven, as well as the headless corpses of Peter's mother and grandmother, are worshipping a mannequin with Charlie's crown severed head placed on it. Joan removes the crown and places it on Peter's head, addressing him as Charlie. She then proclaims that Charlie is Paimon, they have corrected his female body and given him his preferred male host, and the coven help here as King Paimon. End of story. So what did I think of Hereditary? Now, well, I've only seen it a couple of times. I am going to say it's kind of a strange film and what have you, but, well, I can find it to be pretty spine-tingling and what have you. When the film was released, it did pretty well and became a, bi a big hit for A24, making $82 million on a $10 million budget. It made $44 million here in the U.S. and $38 million overseas. So apparently it did pretty good. And also it was even the biggest, widest, the widest ever released for an A24 for flick, surpassing It Comes at Night, which came out the previous year. Anyway, the film has gotten good reviews, and it's at 90% on Ron Tomatoes saying that the film uses its classic setup as the framework for a harrowing, uncommonly unsettling horror film whose cold touch lingers long beyond the closing credits. Peter Travers says in Rolling Stone, says it's Colette giving the performance of her career who takes us inside Annie's breakdown in flesh and spirit and shares what's left of our nerves. Her tour de force bristles with provocations that for sure will keep you up nights, but first you'll scream your bloody head off. Yes. And some have, well, some have compare this to the exorcist in Rosemary's Baby in ways. Definitely. But Cinema Score gave it a weak D plus in their score. But nevertheless, the film did well and went on to numerous awards including six big Fangoria Chainsaw Awards. Very impressive. Now the reviews are actually Good and what have you, because they liked the performance of Tony Collette, Ari Aster's direction, and the score from Colin Stetson. I thought those were all good too. And well, I will say the story that um, Aster that Aster's story for this was good as well. So I really did like that as well. Now, as for our cast, we have Tony Collette playing Amy Graham. She was very good. Gabriel Byrne played Steve Graham who was good. Peter Graham was played by Alex Wolf, who, uh, let me see if I know, who most people may remember him from Nickelodeon's The Naked Brothers Band. Uh, and of course, um, he had recently done Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, the previous year. And he's been in lots of other movies. Millie Shapiro, in her feature film debut, played Charlie. She did very good job. Anne Dowd played Joan, and Mallory Bechtel played Peter Schoolman love interest Bridget. And Ari Aster has an uncredited voice cameo as Annie's art dealer who calls to offer support after the tragedy she has been experiencing. 
So anyway, Hereditary's pretty shocking and what have you. And I really thought it was not too bad. Uh, I may have to give it another watch today, but after only seeing it twice, Hereditary's pretty shocking and spine tingling in parts. It will scare you big time. So with everything I've said, would I recommend Hereditary? The answer would be, I'd say, hell yeah, go for it. Hereditary, watch it. I'd say you won't be disappointed. Uh, I mean, after this, Ari Aster would go on to do some other films for A24. The following year after this, he would direct Midsommar. And more recently, he directed... One of their recent hits from earlier this year, Bo is Afraid, which I haven't seen yet, but I'll see it someday, I promise. So anyway, Hereditary, it's off. It's an awesome horror film, in my opinion. I mean, I wasn't bothered by it much. It was kind of freaky and creepy, though, but well, you get the point. So anyway, what did you think of Hereditary? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button. Subscribe and be a part of the Big D Nation. Now, here's a slight announcement that I'm going to give to you. Please stand by. I'll be right back. Okay, now here's a quick, a little bit of an announcement. Change of plans. Now, I was going to review Us next, but unfortunately, since the Spy Get Out has even done too well, it's only gotten a measly four views. Come on, that can do better than that. So I'm rescheduling us. It will be pre still be coming up this month, but I'm sending it to Friday, from which I was going to do pieces on that day. So I'm going to review pieces next, and then tomorrow for a premiere late tomorrow morning, and then tomorrow night you'll get um, another review uh, before I go to All Hallows Eve on Thursday, and then after that, Terrifier. Okay? Just thought you all know. Uh, like I said. My schedule is subject to change if you've already seen my schedule video. So anyway, that's all I'm going to tell you. So again, let me know what you thought about Hereditary. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Click the like button. And so forth. You know the rest. And stay tuned. The pieces review will be coming up late tomorrow morning. So if you like this video, consider checking out my reviews for these films in the popular exorcist series in the upper left hand corner is my review of the exorcist from 1973 which is celebrating its 50th anniversary go or go to the upper right hand corner and see the back-to-back -back review i did on exorcist the beginning and dominion prequel to the exorcist or go to the bottom left hand corner and see my recent review for another A24 film, and that was The Witch from 2015. And the bottom right-hand corner is a button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying see ya.